if you could please just think with me for a little bit this morning about uh, motherhood. You know, I mean, usually pastor has a choice when it, Mother's Day comes to either do a Mother's Day message or just continue in the series that he's on or whatever he's doing. But I almost always, I try to apt to, you know, go to and have a Mother's Day teaching because I feel like motherhood is so important. And it doesn't matter what series I'm in, I, I try to have a Mother's Day message. If I'm in a series where Mother's Day fits, then I try to work it in, you know, because we need uh, to focus on and celebrate motherhood in this day and age more than we ever have in the past. Mothers need to be honored more than they ever uh, needed to be honored because we're in a time where there's an utter breakdown of the family in our country and in the Western Hemisphere at large and in the world. Uh, motherhood is not prized. It's not praised. Uh, uh, you, you get an onslaught from the evil one, from Satan, who wants to destroy the institution of the family. We do have a spiritual enemy, and they want to destroy the, the, the family, and, and they want to attack motherhood and demean motherhood. And I like to exalt motherhood because, wow, I have a mom, <laughs> and I'm very grateful uh, for my mother, who has been such a blessing uh, throughout my, you know, 46 years of life. What an incredible mother I have, and, and I've seen so many incredible mothers, and I know so many incredible mothers. Uh, and the enemy would like mothers to devalue what it means to be a mother and lure them out of their motherly responsibilities to, in, their, in his effort to destroy the family and to destroy the mother. So I think it's important that we understand the importance of motherhood. In fact, the name of this message, I've entitled it, The Price of a Mom. The Price of a Mom. And you really can't put a price on a mom, but I was reading on salary.com. Uh, it's a, they're the compensation experts about mothers, a story about mothers. And uh, they gave the price, the value, monetarily, of a in this world system of a stay-at-home mom and working moms. And it was quite interesting because they had stay-at-home moms making $134,000. $134,000. dollars if they got paid for all that they did. I thought that was quite remarkable, quite interesting. And if you're a mother, you know how you do a lot of work. Uh, working moms would earn $85,000, $85,876 annually for their mom job portion of their work in addition to the money they would make outside of their mom job. Quite incredible as well, isn't that? Uh, and moms average a total of 93, stay-at-home moms average a... Uh, a total of 93.8 hours of work a week, whereas uh, the stay-at-home mom, that would, that's the uh, mother that would work outside the house too, I'm sorry, would be 93.8 hours a week of work. Stay-at-home mom, 91.6 hours, pretty much the same. Salary, uh, and that would be in the house and roundabout. So it's interesting that salary.com actually, uh, you know, they gave a list of the jobs that mothers do when they had these surveys filled out, and they, they do more than 10, but here's the 10 jobs that they would be paid for uh, that a mother does on an average day. Housekeeper was uh, number one. Daycare center teacher, uh, number two. Uh, cook, number three. Uh, computer operator, laundry machine operator, janitor, facilities manager, van driver, CEO, nurse, uh, we could add others there. I mean, all, the women here at Blessed Hope, they would also be teachers, amen? Homeschooling moms would be teachers. And non-homeschooling moms that go here to Blessed Hope Chapel are still homeschooling moms, amen? Because they still teach their children scripture as well, at least if they listen to their pastor and they listen to the word they do, amen? And we could go on and on with that list. Uh, you know, if you have a swimming pool, you're a lifeguard part-time. I mean, you could just go on and on and on with that list. And it's pretty amazing when you think about what mothers do. And uh, you know that mothers do far more than we can even enumerate. I mean, they, they, their work starts when they carry you for nine months in their tummy. And that's no easy feat, men, okay? Uh, the most painful thing in the world, they say, is giving birth to a, a baby. That's supposed to be the most painful thing in the world. And guys, all I can do, if I can use this metaphor, is... The only thing I can compare it to, because I really can't, I'm a man, but when they explain the pain, I think of if a guy, if, you have, if it's a guy you've ever been kicked between the legs, that's probably what it feels like in a sustained way. 
That's got to be pain. And guys know what that feels like. Even my little boy, Josiah, when he was just two years old, you know, never been hit between the legs. I think he was two or three years old. He was watching a karate movie or something, and the guy got kicked between the legs, and he's at two or three years old, and he goes, and he goes ah! And I'm like, how do you know that hurts, you know? But for a woman, giving birth is even supposedly more painful than anything we've experienced, you know? And it's quite crazy when you think about it. Uh, what women go through from the very get-go. Then they change your diapers, you know, they wipe your face, they, you know, they blow your nose, uh, which I'm probably going to need to do in a little bit because of what I just had to cover before we got into the message. Uh, it was pretty sad. Keep his family in prayer. Hey, you know what? I mean, they pack your lunches, they, they watch you, they're constantly, you have to be attentive. And, and, and that's just from the get-go, from, you know, outside the womb and then and then it just goes on and on and on. And I think the teenagers, for a lot of parents, are even, is even harder. Isn't that true? You know, staying up late at night, worried about the child and what have you. Mothers are absolutely amazing. And they're different than fathers. Fathers are amazing in their own right. But mothers are wired in just an incredibly different way by God. I mean, my wife to this day, she has senses that I don't understand, motherly senses, you know, where... You know, she just, you know, bounces off the walls for the kids and what have you. And the energy they have reminds me of the, the honeybee. You know, honeybees are working so much. They're constantly going. Little, you ever watch a bee at work? They're just, they work and they work and they work. And that reminds me of a mother because, you see, the honeybee, if one pound of honey, it takes one bee, if it's to make one pound of honey, it has to fly 55,000 miles to make one pound of honey. Has to visit about 2 million flowers to make one pound of honey. Has to uh, uh, get about 75,000 loads of nectar to make just one pound of honey. Now, honey happens to be the only food that humans eat that's produced by an animal. I don't know if you knew that. In fact, I was looking at bees recently, studying bees, and, and uh, Josiah came into my office when I was studying bees, and that jumped out at him. He goes, Dad, is that true? I mean, that's, you know, that's the only food we eat produced by animals. And then I thought about it, you know, I thought, you know, it's crazy because I love honey. Any, how, how many people here like honey? Like honey? Honey is really good, amen? And how many of you realize how much work a bee has to put in honey? You're eating it, just so cavalierly. You don't realize all the work that goes into, you know, eating a pound of honey. That's a lot of work. 55,000 miles, you know, 2 million visits to, to, uh, <laughs> to flowers, 75,000 loads he's got to carry. That's crazy. In the meantime, he's getting whacked around by kids in a swimming pool and, you know, and doesn't know why people don't like him. He's just trying to do his work and they all hate him, you know. All this work he's got to do, it's crazy. And when you think about it, a mother, I thought a bee is very similar to a mother. Mothers do so much work. And while we eat our honey sandwich, we don't realize all the work that's gone into the honey. When a kid eats his peanut butter and honey sandwich or whatever, he doesn't realize all the work that his mother has done up to that point. Isn't that true? Quite interesting when you think about it. How we are so ungrateful as children for all that our mothers have done. And we don't often show them the love that we should show them. And we don't give them the honor that they should receive. And that has to do with children. That has to do with husbands of wives. Husbands of wives, all that your wives do for you as a, a wife and for your kids. Wow, so much of that goes unnoticed. And I think it's time we obey the scripture that says to honor your father and your mother. Amen. A lot of times when I do a Mother's Day message, I do it on, on what it means to be a mom. You know, that's typically what I do, what the scriptures say about mothers. But this Sunday, I want to talk about us celebrating Mother's Day by giving our Mother's Day, our mothers, giving back as their children. You, and your mother may have passed on, but there's other mothers that you can bless. Amen? And we should bless all the mothers because... What a gift they are. They're made in the image of God. That's why you really can't put a monetary value on a mother. They're far more valuable than many sparrows, Jesus said. So as we consider how to honor our mothers, I want us to first of all consider that they do far more than we even recognize. 
and things we can't even see when they're worrying, and then hopefully not just worrying, but then from worrying, graduating to praying for us and what have you. Now, I want to talk about different things that we can do to bless our mothers. And the first thing we find, and it's one of the Ten Commandments, of course, is in Exodus chapter 20. Don't turn to Exodus. Turn to Deuteronomy chapter 5. It's also there. In Exodus 20, 12, it says, Honor your father and your mother, that, the, their, uh, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God gives you. Deuteronomy chapter 5, we have a reiteration of the Ten Commandments. And it's interesting as we look at Deuteronomy chapter 5, uh, and God repeats these things for a reason. Uh, verse 16, chapter 5, verse 16. Honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God has commanded you, that your days may be prolonged and that it may go well with you on the, uh, on the land which the Lord your God gives you. Brothers and sisters, we're commanded to honor our parents. We're commanded to honor our mothers. What does it mean to honor? What does it mean to honor someone? It means to put them in a high place. It means to value them. It means to recognize their value and to highly esteem them. Honor them. Value them. Put them in a high place. Highly esteem them. Do you highly esteem your mother? And no mother is perfect because we're all sinners. The Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one. You know, even Mary, the mother of Jesus, the Bible says that she wasn't sinless, contrary to what Roman Catholicism teaches. The Bible is very clear that, that Mary sinned too. Everybody fell short. That's why we see Mary offering turtle doves for her sins with Joseph prior to Jesus dying for her sins on the cross. That's why the Bible says all, including Mary, have sinned. It doesn't say all except Mary. It says all except Jesus. Amen. The Bible says Jesus was without sin. So every, no mother is perfect, but guess what? And I say that, and I emphasize that, because somebody might say, well, my mother is not, you know, perfect, or, you know, she's not, you know, this or that, or what have you, but either are you. And we're still called to honor our mothers, and God knew all along that mothers would fail, and they would fall short. But wow, you know what? How easy it should be to honor our mothers, because, you know, I can think of a lot. I can't think of, I personally, when I think about my mom, I can't think of bad things. You know, it's just, she's such an awesome woman. You know, if there was a sinless mother, my mom would be one of them, you know. And that's a, that's a son's perspective, I know. But mothers are quite amazing, so we need to honor them. Number two, and these next points I make will all fall under that first, you know, as, as, as you know, uh, sub-command under the first one to honor our mothers. And that is, we need to show obedience to our mothers, now, of course, I'm not talking about if you're a grown man and you're out of the house, you know, although mothers still give some very good advice and we should, a lot of grown men would do better uh, than, uh, with a lot of their decisions if they would heed uh, the concerns of their mothers in certain areas. But certainly if you're in the home, certainly if you're a child still, certainly if you're not a man yet or a, a woman, uh, you need to be obedient as children to uh, your mother, your parents, but also specifically, specifically your mother. Turn to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. And when you get there, I'm sorry, Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 2. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment, with a promise so that it may be well with you and that you may live long on the earth. Brothers and sisters, notice here, Paul combines the idea of obedience to a mother with a command to honor a mother. So if you're a young person here, you're living at home, you know, I don't care how old you are, if you're living at your mom's house, uh, you're still, there should still be some obedience there, you know? Uh, but I'll tell you what, Obedience is so important because here Paul combines and shows us that honoring is tied to obedience. And you can't really honor your mother if you're in rebellion to her motherhood, if you're a child. In fact, go to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs has a lot to say. In fact, I'm not even going to exhaust all that Proverbs says about 
obedience to a mother, and we'll look, but we'll still cover a few scriptures to give you an idea, because I want to cover other, other things other than, than just obedience, but turn to Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1. And right from the get-go, in the very first chapter, verse 7, it says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. If you don't fear God, you really can't know what's really up in the universe. You can't, you can't really see the big picture, amen? Fools despise wisdom and instruction. When you fear God, you recognize, wow, I'm accountable. That's why I have this conscience. That's why I see all this design in nature and all this power in the universe that God made. And he's a powerful moral being because my conscience bears witness that there's right and wrong. And the power that I see around me bears witness that there is a powerful creator. Because the God that created the universe has to have a ton of power. Amen. And we're accountable to him, so we fear him. We recognize who he is, and that, that, that gives us knowledge of the Holy One and wisdom. But the very next verse says, Hear, my son, your father's instruction, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Young person, understand today that you need to honor your father. But notice what he says here also. Hear, my son, your father's instruction, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. That's important. Verse 9, indeed, they are a graceful reef to your head and ornaments to your neck. My son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. If they say, come with us, let us lie in wait for, for blood. Let us ambush the innocent without cause. In other words, hey, you're getting invited into some gang, you know, but your mother's telling you, hey, you know what? Don't run with those guys. But you say, you know, I'm going to hang out with these guys anyway. We're hanging out with people that are just bad news. Your mother says, you know what? Don't do it. Verse 12. And they say, let us swallow them alive like Sheol or hell, even whole as those who go down to the pit. We will find all kinds of precious wealth. We will, we will fill our houses with spoil. Throw in your lot with us. We shall all have one purse. My son, do not walk in the way with them. Keep your feet from their path. For their feet run to evil, and they hasten to shed blood. Indeed, it is useless to spread uh, the baited net in the sight of any bird. But they lie in wait for their own blood. They ambush their own lives. Really, what you're doing is destroying yourself. You are, uh, the, uh, so are the ways of everyone who gains by violence. It takes away the life of its possessors. Mothers who instruct their children to stay away from certain people that, that have destructive lifestyles. It's because they care about you. Your mothers instruct you to watch what you do, to watch who you hang with, because they love you, because they care about you. A friend that would lead you into violence and destruction isn't really a friend at all. It's a deceived person. So praise God for mothers who care about their children. Look at Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 1 my son, give attention to my wisdom. Incline your ear to my understanding. Look at verse 20. I'm sorry, chapter 6, verse 20 now. My son, observe the commandment of your what? Father. And do not forsake the teaching of your mother. Bind them continually on your heart. Tie them around your neck. When you walk about, they will guide you. When you sleep, they will watch over you. And when you awake, they will talk to you for the commandment is a lamp and the teaching is a light and the reproofs for discipline are the way of life young people and if your children are here today and they're in sunday school i encourage you to get this this cd for them and have them listen to it and to make sure they've listened to it say your assignment is to write down every verse maybe not the whole verse out that'd be nice too but write the references that pastor joe gives you know, and that's your homework assignment. Because I'll tell you what, your children need to know what the scriptures say. Because I know when I was growing up, and I didn't know the Lord, and I had instruction from my mom and dad, they didn't know the Lord, you know, they weren't following Jesus Christ, but they still gave me uh, morals, and they still cared deeply about us, you know, and uh, th they told us, you know, they gave us, you know, some warnings, they were totally unaware as to what was out there. And it's even darker now, parents. And we were hanging out with, you know. I mean, I was before I was, I mean, I was smoking pot. First joint was in fourth grade, okay. And my parents didn't find about, about that until junior high when my friend put my 
pot plants because he got mad at me, dug them up and put them on my front porch, and they woke up before I did, okay? But you know what? Uh, I look back and say, wow, their instruction kept me from a lot worse, you know? I mean, I was a very violent kid. I was a street fighter, all those kinds of things. And then when I became a Christian, I realized what it meant to follow God, to honor him, and to honor my mother, and to honor my father. And you know what? I'm closer now at 46 to my parents than I ever was when I was, you know, a teenager. Because the Lord has made a difference in my life. And you start to realize how smart your parents really were when you get older, you know? You think, oh, they just don't get it. And you think because you get away with certain things that they just aren't very smart. But really, you know what? You're the one that's not very smart because you're ambushing yourself. You're slitting your own throat if you're in rebellion to the teachings of your parents. Now, look at uh, chapter 10. Chapter 10 of Proverbs, verse 1. The Proverbs of Solomon, a wise son makes a father glad, but a foolish son is a grief to his mother. You know what? That's a sad commentary. It's very true, though. It's very true that a, a wise son makes his father glad, but a foolish son is a grief to his mother. Foolish means disobedient, rebellious. And there's so many right now. It's so heartbreaking. There's so many millions of mothers whose hearts are broken because of the disobedience and the rebellion of their children. Don't be one of those children. Don't be one of those children that brings grief to your mother. After all that she's done, you know, like that honeybee, all the work that she's done to be a blessing to you, how could you bring grief to her heart? God, may God give us repentance that we would be obedient children. Proverbs chapter 15. Proverbs chapter 15. And young people, I mean, listen up. Verse 20. A wise son makes a father glad, but a foolish man despises his mother. If you despise your mother, the Bible says you're foolish. You're not wise. You're foolish. Because the Bible commands you to honor your mother, to love your mother. But my mother's not perfect. She said this to me, and she did that to me. Guess what? You're not perfect, and you said this to this person, and you did that to that person. But guess what? God still loves you. Amen? You're supposed to love your mother. You're not supposed to despise her. Chapter 15 of Proverbs, verse 20. Now go to chapter 19 of Proverbs, verse 26. He who assaults his father and drives his mother away is a, sh is a shameful and disgraceful son. Don't drive. Don't assault your father. And don't drive your mother away. Don't be belligerent. Don't be in her face. That's a shame to all of heaven. That breaks the heart of God. And don't treat your mother that way. And if you have, you need to sincerely say you're sorry and repent and never do that again. Amen? Chapter 20, verse 20. Chapter 20, verse 20. Hopefully that's your mom calling you back because you said happy Mother's Day. Verse 20. He who curses his father or his mother... His lamp will go out in time of darkness. Did he catch that? Verse 20. He who curses his father or curses or his mother, his lamp will go out in time of darkness. The Bible talks about how your eyes are the lamp of the soul and that shows forth your life. But the first, or the third, uh, I'm sorry, the first commandment with a promise is to obey your father or honor your father and mother so you will what? Live long on the earth. Amen? But... If you don't honor your parents, you're actually slitting your own throat, as I said, because your life will be shortened. And here we see very clearly, he who curses his father or his mother, his lamp will go out in time of darkness. Wow. Chapter 23 of Proverbs. Chapter 23 of Proverbs. Verse 22. Listen to your father who begot you, and do not despise your mother when she is old. And do not despise your mother when she is old. You know, that's an important verse, guys. Because a lot of sons appreciate their mothers when their mothers are blessing them, when they're giving them a ride to football practice or a baseball game or basketball practice or a track meet, or they're giving them money when they're going to hang out with their friends. But then when their mothers get older, they begin to forget about them. 
they don't visit them anymore. You've heard, a way of throw, you heard about throwaway children. There's a lot of throwaway mothers out there where the kids forget about their mothers as their mothers get older. And then sometimes people, when their mothers get really old, they never visit them again. That is sinful, folks. That is sinful. That is sin. If your mother's older and you never visit her or never try, maybe she lives half the world away, well, you, you never call her because you can't visit her. You could call her, you know? Well, she could barely talk. Well, have the nurse put the phone against her head, you know? And just tell her how much you love her. Well, I don't know if she understands me. Well, just in case. She might. Amen? Tell her you love her. Don't forget your mother when she's old. You know, this message is meant to be a blessing to mothers, and it's hard to do this kind of message because I don't want any of you here to feel condemned because we all fall short in sin, and sin is breaking the law of love toward God and toward others, right? So we've all loved less than we should have loved. So everybody here is going to be convicted to one degree or another, amen? But this is not condemnation. This is conviction. So we can be a blessing to our mother, amen? So we can honor them the way we're called to. So we have to talk about these things. But just admit that we've fallen short and then then amend our ways, you know? They say, it's too late. My mom's died. You know what? It's not too late. Because you can show your love to your mother by loving other mothers, amen? By treating other mothers respectfully and caring for people when they're old. And by doing that, you know, you're honoring God, really. He's the one you're honoring. But you're also showing that you've had a heart toward the old. We dare not forget the old, amen? I want to be a blessing to them. In fact, go to Proverbs chapter 30. Proverbs chapter 30. And when you get there, look at verse 11. There is a kind of man who curses his father and does not bless his mother. You know, that sounds so strange the way it's written. There's a kind of man who curses his father and does not bless his mother as though it's some exotic animal that's just really weird. You know, there's a kind of animal out there that is really strange. But today, this isn't so strange because we're a disobedient and rebellious generation that lacks love and common decency. And God forbid that, that we would be that kind of bizarre creature because that creature or that person is in huge trouble. Look at verse 17. The eye that mocks a father and scorns a mother, the ravens of the valley will pick it out, and the young eagles will eat it. That's pretty heavy. In other words, if you could care less about your parents and you curse them and you know, you're rebellious toward them, it's basically stating that you know, you're going to have a horrible death. That's pretty heavy when you think about it. Look at chapter 31, the very last proverb, verse 1. The words of King Lem uh, Lemuel, Lemuel, the oracle which his mother taught him. That's what his mother taught him. And that's the rest of Proverbs 31, guys, about the excellent wife and everything. Mothers give their children instructions about, you know, what kind of wife you should marry, what kind of man you should marry if you're a woman. What, verse 2, what, O my son, and, and what, O son of my womb, and what, uh, O son of my vows, do not give your strength to women or your ways to that which destroys kings. In other words, mothers teach their sons not to be promiscuous, to marry one woman. Amen? It is not for kings, says the mother to Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine or for rulers to desire strong drink. She's instructing him, hey, why? Why does she instruct him this way? Verse 5, for they will drink and forget what is decreed and pervert the rights of all the afflicted. This is Solomon's son being instructed by his mother, who will also be a king. And it's not for you to get drunk. It's not for you to impair your vision, your way of thinking. Because you must make decisions that affect other people. And guess what? As Christians, we are kings and priests under the Lord, the scriptures say, a kingdom of priests. And we must render decisions for our families, amen? And it's important that those who are in leadership aren't drunk. The Bible condemns all drunkenness, by the way. It says all drunkards in 1 Corinthians 6 will not inherit God's kingdom. 
It says not to be deceived on that matter. If you think you can get drunk and you're still going to go to heaven, read 1 Corinthians 6, 9 and 10. It makes it real clear that drunkards will not go to heaven. That's not me. That's the Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. Very clear. And right here, the mother instructs his son to not be a drunkard. Because leaders make decisions and they can forget what they've decreed and pervert justice. By the way, do you know what the drinking capital of the country is? Washington, D.C. It's our politicians. No wonder our country's in such a mess. These are the guys that are rendering decisions. A lot of them are drunkards. And you wonder why things are all messed up. You wonder why California has the fifth biggest uh, or agricultural production on the planet, bigger than most countries, and we're bankrupt? A lot of these guys are getting drunk, snorting coke, doing these kinds of things, and they're, we're almost bankrupt. <laughs> and a lot of it, it people think, oh, it's because of this, because a lot of it's because of the heart and sin and alcohol, you know, drunkenness. So mothers, wise mothers, instruct their children to stay away from alcohol. In fact, you know what the number one killer is of, of teens? Drunk driving on the freeway. Death by drunk driving. And parents, I mean, we need to instruct our children strongly and keep them away from that element. I don't want to do funerals of kids that have been killed. I'll do them for sure. But I'd rather have preventative medicine, amen? And instruct your children to stay away from alcohol. And you know what? It's hard to instruct your child to stay away from alcohol if you drink. Do as I say, not as I do. So I hope to God you're not getting drunk. Just a little. Just a little? No, the Bible doesn't say if you just get a little drunk, you'll still go to heaven. It says don't be deceived. Drunkards will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. And the last thing you want to do is lead your child that way. I read a story years ago where a man, and I shared that with you back then, where it was Thanksgiving and it was filled with snow and, and they were supposed to all be celebrating, but he decided he wanted to drink. Wasn't going to drink that day, I guess. Decided he wanted to drink. Went to the liquor store and made these big footprints in the snow. And he looked back and his little boy was putting his feet and all his footprints following him at the distance. And he realized at that time, my kid's going to be doing the same thing I'm doing. And he stopped drinking on the spot. As parents, we need to love our kids enough to deny ourselves and not lead them astray, amen? And you know what? Young people... Your parents, when they tell you not to drink, not to smoke pot, not to, you know, take PCP, not to, you know, take ecstasy, not to take methamphetamines, these kinds of things, because they care about you. Because the Bible says we're to be sober. The Bible says be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary the devil walks about as a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith. You cannot resist the devil if you're not sober-minded. The minute you start putting things in your mind that alter your consciousness, you open yourself up to demonic forces. That's why you'll see all kinds of bizarre things. You'll think all kinds of perverted things because it's not just your mind at that point. There's demonic spirits at work according to the scripture. That's why the Bible uses the word for witchcraft in the Old Testament from a word that means cutting because they would cut herbs together. Hallucinogenic properties. That's why the New Testament word in the Greek for uh, the word for uh, druggings or dopings or sorcery is related. It's called pharmakeia. You've got to watch out for mind-altering drugs, the illicit drugs that people take for entertainment. I'm not talking about a painkiller, although you've got to be careful with those too. I'm talking about illicit drugs. And children, young people, when your parents tell you not to take those things, it's because they love you, because they know there's a spiritual war, because they care about you and they don't want you to be destroyed. There's such an allurement out there. And you'll have all kinds of other voices telling you just the opposite. And sometimes, oh, I keep my kid away from Marilyn Manson. I know, I don't want, because he says, you know, he admits he will destroy my kid. He said that, basically. Kids listen to my music, they'll be destroyed by it. He said that. I'm summing up what he said. I have a lot of quotes like that from him. But you know what? Even people that seem so innocent. I remember when Britney Spears' first album came out, that first album, not in the States, but in Europe, the front cover had her praying. But really, she was going to be praying, P-R-E-Y-I-N-G on young people. 
And she let all kinds of young people got into her, thought she was safe from the whole Disney Channel thing into a life of perversity, just like Madonna did before her in the 80s. And then all of a sudden I see Miley Cyrus. I've told my children, I'm telling you right now, right now that she's probably going to end up doing the same thing Britney did. And you know what? She just came out with a new video. She's not even 18 yet. And her video is very sexually perverse, very suggestive, different people groping her, two at once sexually at some points. And she sings about how I will not be tamed. I can't be blamed because it's in my DNA. In other words, I'm not accountable, you know, and I can't be saved. I don't want my daughter singing, I can't be saved. And you know what? The reason I talk about these things is because I see a wasteland of littered children who have had parents with great intentions but let their guard down, and now their kids are singing things that are so contrary to the Word of God. That's why the Bible says that we're supposed to sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and let the Word of Christ fill us richly, not the Word of Miley Cyrus. And now she's going down that same path. She, they took some erotic pictures of her. And, she, and then the thing was, well, her dad or le, her parents left the studio, and I guess her grandmother or somebody else was with her, and, and they didn't know what the photographer was doing, and there was these really erotic pictures taken of her a couple years ago where she basically had nothing on but a sheet that she put in various ways. Just a kid. And I thought, you know, I don't trust that. I don't know. Maybe that's what happened, but I, I don't trust it. I think there's more to the picture. I've been telling my kids for a long time ago, watch what happens with her just a little while. Watch where, where she takes everybody. And it's happened again. It's not just her. There's a lot of people with a lot of money. They want to push people's buttons and make more money. These are people that produce these things that are meant to entice and seduce. And I'm encouraging you right now. The best kind of music in the world that moves the heart and has meaning and value and purpose to it is that kind of music which glorifies God. That's what we're going to be worshiping to forever. And there's so much good Christian music out there right now. I don't know why we have to go into the cesspool. Amen? Praise God. God, help us to protect our children. And young people, when your parents are saying, hey, stay away from this group. Stay away from this. Don't be enticed by sinners. We see that in Proverbs chapter 1. Because they care about you. And you need to be obedient. So you'll be blessed. Amen? You need to be obedient. So you'd be blessed. Besides honor and obedience, number one and two, number three, we need to show our mothers love. We need to show our mothers a lot of love. You know, mothers need to be shown love. You know, sometimes, I mean, mothers love, don't they? Mothers love their children to a fault sometimes. What do I mean? You'll see like a, a, a serial killer's mom, you know? And... She'll just be there until the day of his death, and she'll be crying, and he's such a good guy, though. And yeah, but he slaughtered 46 people, but he has a good heart deep down, you know. The mothers just don't give up on their kids. It's very rare that they do. It's amazing. But that kind of love isn't, and I'm not saying that mothers always see straight at that time. Their love is just so amazing that they'll see through a child's sins. But you know what? That love isn't always reciprocated by the kids. And young people, we need to show love. You need to show love to your parents. You need to show love to your mother. Especially in these days because Jesus said in the last days the love of many would grow what? Would grow cold. That's agape, Matthew 24. But also in 2 Timothy chapter 3 when it says terrible times would come and it said children would be disobedient to their parents. It's prophesied. There'd be a lot of rebellion against parents. And it says that they'll be without storge. That's another Greek word for love. That's the word for what? You remember that? Family love. Storge is family love. They'll be without family love. Young people, we need to make sure that we have family love, that we have love for our parents. Amen? You need to make sure you're loving your mother. Make sure you're loving your father and affirm that love for them. In fact, from a Dear Abby letter, what a sad letter this was. This guy writes about how he didn't tell his wife he loved her, the mother of his children. Dear Abby, he says, I enlisted shortly after Pearl Harbor. 36 days later, I was on my way to the Philippines, and route the Philippines fell to the Japanese, and we were routed to Australia. 11 days after we landed, I met the most beautiful girl in the whole world. Our first date, I told her I was going to marry her. 
I did 18 months later while uh, on a 10-day R&R leave from New Guinea. After more than 57 years of marriage and two children, my beloved Mary died five days before Christmas. Although we agreed that our, our, our ashes would be scattered over the mountains, I found I could not part with her. I found I couldn't part with hers. While Mary was alive, she would frequently say, you don't know how much I love you. I would reply, likewise. I never said, I love you. Now her ashes are on my dresser where I tell her several times a day how much I love her, but it's too late. Although I wrote poetry to her, I could not bring myself to say the three words I knew she wanted to hear. As my dearest was dying, and we thought she was comatose, I told her, there aren't enough words to tell you how much I love you. A few hours later, she whispered, not enough words, she whispered, not enough words, and died. The reason I'm writing is to encourage men to express their feelings with their loved ones who are alive. I don't know why, but many men are reluctant to express the depth of their feelings. Signed, Missing Mary in Colorado. You know, guys, daughters, sons, learn from this guy's pain, amen? Don't wait till your mother dies and she can't hear you and it's just a grave or it's just ashes to say I love you. Tell your mother and your wife you love her now, amen? Try to tell her you love her often, amen? Are you, do you say I love you to your mother, to your wife? Say it. She's done so much for you. She's poured out her life to be a blessing to you. Amen? The least you could do is tell her you love her from time to time. Amen? Tori, tell her right now. Tell her you love her. <laughs> she just did. That's why I said that. That's cute, Tori. Praise the Lord. We need to love our parents, eh? We need to, we need to love our parents and let them know we love them let your wife know you love her time you need to spend time with your mother and your father a lot of this carries right over to the father as well amen you need to spend time you know i was encouraging and counseling a brother recently off and on because his wife keeps telling him she feels like she's dying she feels like she's dying and the reason she feels like she's dying is because her son who's moved out of her house she's not a believer the brother is a believer he goes here she doesn't is because her son is you know out of the house now and graduated from college doesn't live far away but gives her in her estimation very little attention doesn't respond to her calls and doesn't tell her he loves her and she's a wreck right now she needs Jesus amen to fill that void but it would also be really nice if her son would spend some time with her and tell him he tell her he loves her amen let's learn from these things guys I'm dealing with that right now and more so the brothers a letter read from a family radio from family radio over your family radio of an 80 year old woman on her birthday she wrote this and sent it in to all my children I suppose my upcoming birthday started my thoughts along these lines this is a good time to tell you what I really want and the things that I can never get enough of yet they are free I want the intangibles I would like for you to come and sit with me and for you to be relaxed. We can talk or we can be silent. I would just like for us to be together. I need your patience and when I don't hear what you say the first time, when I don't, when you don't, hear, what I, when I don't hear what you say the first time, I know how tiresome it is to always be repeating, but sometimes I must ask you to repeat. I need your patience when I think too much about the past with my slowness and my set ways. I want you to be tolerant with what the years have done to me physically. Please be understanding about my personal care habits. I spill things, I lose things, I get unduly excited when I try to figure out my bank statements. I can't remember what time uh, to take my medication or uh, if I took it already. I take too many naps, but sleep helps to pass the day. Well, there you have it. Time, patience, and understanding. Those are the priceless gifts that I want. Finally, in this letter, the Apostle Paul wrote, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's a wonderful feeling to know his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he cares for me. I guess being old is not so bad after all. Love, Mom. You know, a lot of our moms want just love, patience, understanding, just to be with them and spend some time with them. Amen? Are we giving that to them? 
That's how we honor them. That's one of the ways we honor them. And lastly, I share with you, number the last one I'll share with you is they need our care. You see, our parents, like I said, they've changed our diapers, amen? They've wiped our noses. They've wiped our faces. They've coddled us. They've kept us ever since we were little kids. They took such good care of us. And, and then parents grow old. And one of the things I believe it means to do to honor them is to make sure that they're taken care of, that they're not out on the streets begging, amen? That they're somehow taken care of. And the scripture I want to take you to, the last scripture we'll go to is John, John chapter 19. And this blows me away because this is how Jesus cared for his mother when he was on the cross. Amidst having his beard torn out, having his head whacked with, with a rod, having thorns first put in his head and smashed down, like because, you know, to, they mocked him as the king of the Jews, having been whipped two different times, 40 times each, incessantly, probably over 40 having his robe ripped from his back, parted by having spit upon, mocked, a bag put over his face, punched over and over again, his face more marred than any man's. From the cross, he had seven saints. And in the first saint, he prayed that the Father would forgive his enemies. Amazing. Through the mashed up face. And the second word he gave from the cross was, his promise to the dying thief who repented that he would see him in paradise. The third word that he had, amidst all this, if anybody you think could have an excuse for not thinking too much about mom at that point, you would think it would be Jesus. And plus, he's bearing the sins of the world. And then the third word he had, we'll look at verse 23. Verse 23 of chapter 19. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his outer garments and made four parts a part to every soldier, and also the tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, to decide whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture. They divided my outer garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. That was prophesied to happen 1,500 years, I'm sorry, about 900 years earlier in uh, the book of Psalms, chapter 22. Therefore the soldiers did these things, but standing by the cross of Jesus... Where his mother, there's his mother standing by him. Where his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus then saw his mother, check this out. When he saw his mother, the disciple whom he loved, that would be John, Apostle John, standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. From that hour, the disciple took her into his own household. Wow. That just blows me away. I mean, he's bearing the sins of the world. He's just been just marred like no one has ever been beaten. And through the, the blood-soaked eyes, and the movie The Passion didn't even do justice to what happened to Jesus. People thought it was too brutal. No, it was way worse than that because there's things in the Scripture, and I went through it during the movie The Passion when that was out to show you things that happened to him that aren't even in the Scripture when people say it was violent. No, it was way more violent than what Mel Gibson was able to do, believe me. And through that face that was so smashed up and distorted, he says, woman, behold your son. Son, John, behold your mother. And now Mary, uh, Mary had other sons, Born from her and Joseph, the scriptures tell us that. Throughout the New Gospels, you see that. But he wanted her to have spiritual care. And his brothers were converted later, right after he rose from the dead. Of course, how could he be, you know? Boom, they all came to faith. But he wanted to make sure then and there she'd be taken care of. And you know what? That was really caring for her and making sure as she grew older, she was taken care of. Brothers and sisters, it's not just how you treat your mother when you're in, and so much of this instruction pertains to kids in the home, right? But Jesus was 33 years old at that time. And he was still honoring his mother to his dying breath, amen? We need to make sure that we care for our mothers, even in the darkest hours of our lives, amen? That's pretty heavy when you think about it. You know, a few weeks ago, Lisa and I 
got together with a sister here in the fellowship whose mother, I think, is in her 90s. And we visited her mother with her. And it just so touched my heart. You know, we spent, I don't know, an hour there with her. And it so touched my heart because so much of that room was put together by her daughter that we were there visiting her with. And even though she's in her 90s, she had a radiant smile still. And we talked about the Lord with her, and she knows the Lord. And, and her daughter talks to her about the Lord. And, and things that her daughter's brought to the room, just little things that stick out of my mind even now, that just a picture, a, you know, a, a radio, different things that she brings and the time she spends with her. I thought, that's what it means to honor your mother, you know? We need to make sure we honor our mothers this day. It's Mother's Day. So make sure you reach out to your mothers and, and be a blessing to them, not only today, but for the rest of your lives. What a blessing they have been. Let's be a, a blessing to them as well. You know, my heart breaks for Denise. You know, it's been, a lot of my tears have been for Denise and her little boy. When I pray and, you know, I'm doing fine. The snow just hit me. And uh, I thought, wow, she's going to approach Mother's Day and Dave's not going to be there. But then I thought, you know what? Dave buried his mother some years ago. She's a believer in the Lord. What a happy Mother's Day is for her right now, amen? The cool thing is, is we have continuity if we know Jesus Christ. We get to live forever. That's so awesome. You need to know that. I took my wife out a couple days ago. It was a cheap Mother's Day dinner, if you call it that, because it was, we went to a place where it's only $7.99. That's for your whole meal, you know? It's a good deal. And, you know, Josiah was there, and uh, it's six ninety nine weekdays, by the way. <laughs> That's a but you know what? We shared with the uh, a lady there, really sweet lady, named Highland, and I thought we got to share the gospel with her. And she's the waitress, but she's also running the place right now. And she's actually the property manager down there because the owner's out in Japan or something. And uh, what a sweet lady, you know. And, and I, I asked her, I said, what are you going to do after your career's over? And she misunderstood me, you know, because she thought I meant after work. And she says, I think go to the gym or something like that. I was like, no, no, after your career is all over. And she said, well, retire. Well, what are you going to do when you retire? Travel maybe? Uh, she gave a couple things. I go, well, how about after that? She goes, you mean when I die? I go, yeah. What, what about then? And she said, well, really, you know, I, I care about right now. And I said, but when that time comes, that'll be now for you, you know? She goes, that's right. But what are you going to, you know, do then? She goes, hopefully go to heaven. And I said, why would you go to heaven? She goes, because I'm a good lady. And I said, you know what? You're probably a really good lady relative to other people. You seem really sweet. I go, but compared to God, we really have no righteousness. You know, the Bible says we're all sinners and talked about that. And she agreed. And I told her that the gospel, that Jesus Christ died in your place on the cross. He bore the penalty of your sins, my sins, all of our sins. You can get into heaven, but I said the only way you can is if your sins are forgiven. You have to admit you're a sinner and that recognize that God gave the gift of his son. You can't earn it. I told her it's like Christmas or your birthday. You get a gift. You can't pay for that gift. It's free. You can't earn this gift. It's free. You just have to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Repent and turn from your sin and embrace him as your Lord and Savior. And I asked her if she wanted to do that. And this is, people came and went, you know. And, uh, but she gave, we talked to her for about half an hour, it seemed, and uh, maybe longer. And she said she wanted to pray that. So we prayed right there in the restaurant. She received Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior right there. And then she said, I was sincere in my prayer. It felt so good to pray those words. And, you know, she wants a Bible. We're going to give her a Bible. And, uh, but you know what? If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, you could do the same thing today. You could, all you need to do is recognize that you're a sinner. And wow, you sure make your mom happy to know you're going to heaven. Amen. But you want to do it because you need to get right with God. So if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, all you have to do is recognize you're a sinner. Be sincere about it and truly repent and turn to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Receive that free gift. Amen. If you haven't done that, in fact, let's all bow our hearts before the Lord right now and pray. Just if you haven't come to Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior yet, yet you could be saved just like that lady. Say, Father, forgive me. I know I'm a sinner. 
I know I've blown it. I've broken your heart. I know I'm not here by accident or listening to this message by accident. But I know you're reaching out to me. And I know I've sinned. Forgive me. I believe Jesus died and paid for my sins on the cross. And I trust him now as my Lord and Savior. And I trust that my name through faith is written in heaven in the book of life. And I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord. And I believe that he'll confess me as his child or as your child, Father, when I die. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Let us please stand. Now, do we leave here and forget everything we learned? Or do we amend our ways and make sure? Because it's so human to say, well, the status quo, I'm going to just do what I do. But why do you come here, you know? Hopefully it's to be challenged and to be stretched, amen? You know what? I try to love and honor my mother. I fall short of it, but... When I give a message like this or think about this, I want to be stretched too. So it makes me contemplate of ways I can love my parents more, show them love more, you know? And if you're a mother or father, you're like, man, yeah, why don't my kids do that more, you know? Guess what? We have a father in heaven. It's always Father's Day for him, amen? We need to start thinking about, you know what? How do I show my love for my father in heaven, amen? I'm created to honor him every day. But... We praise God for what our Father's done for us because He showed His love in not only making us, but when we botched things up, blew it, sinned radically, He gave His Son for us. Amen. Demonstrated His love for us that while we were yet sinners, the Bible says Jesus died for us. And, and this bread and this cup, they remind us of what Jesus did for us. Amen. They remind us of what an awesome Savior we have and how we, the bread re represents His body that was given for us on Calvary's cross. Let's give thanks. Father, we give thanks for the bread which represents your son's body. And we partake of it in Jesus' name. I want you to think about the cup and what it represents and how it represents his blood that was shed on the cross for you. Just ask him for forgiveness and thank him that he sent his son to die in your place. Forgive us, Father, for we have sinned, Lord. We thank you that you sent your Son to shed his blood in our place, the righteous for the unrighteous, the godly for the ungodly, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. We partake of the cup with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Hey, brothers and sisters, if your mom is still alive and she's around, and you could touch her physically, give her a big hug and tell her happy Mother's Day and tell her how much you love her. If she's distant, you know, uh, give her a call if you can. If she's gone on already, just thank the Lord for giving you such a, giving you a mother, amen? But hey, happy Mother's Day. God bless you, mothers. You are so awesome. We love you and we praise God for you, amen? Give glory to God.